After life-changing events that create trauma and spiritual injury inside of us, we can feel disconnected with everything, everyone, and even ourselves. The good news is, just like trauma rewires the brain, we can also very easily rewire our own brain right back to a good place where we can once again be centered and confident. In this video, I'll show you how to fast track yourself out of a spiritual injury and back into feeling whole again. So stay tuned. Well, hi there and welcome. My name is Raimi, like Do Re Mi. I'm a best selling author and creator of the Get Unstuck Revolution. I help extraordinary women with big ass dreams just like you who want to get unstuck from a life that doesn't work and get to where you know you need to be into a life that's filled with passions and purpose. Now, let's get started with today's episode. Okay, let me jump off the screen here and change over to my laptop. Today, we're talking about those life-changing events, those pivotal points that can sometimes create a spiritual injury inside of us where we feel like our soul is shattered, like we're disconnected from everything, everyone, and even ourselves at such a core level. If you've ever experienced this, you know exactly how it feels, a little bit crippled, a little bit unbalanced, and maybe a lot unhinged. And if this has been going on for a while, just under the surface, you may be wondering why success is so elusive, like this dark cloud just won't lift. If you aren't getting the success you want in full abundance, however you identify with success, and if you're wanting to tap into a greater knowingness and align with higher frequencies so that you can attract the success you're craving, then this episode is for you. Maybe it's time to open up to your hidden power and create something unimaginable, maybe something totally unreasonable, something that maybe even seems impossible to kick your whole life and all your success into high gear for whatever success means for you. And today, I'm going to try and get you one step closer. As business owners, change makers, thought leaders, innovators, disruptors, or even if we haven't found the right fit in the world yet, whether we're talking about our relationships at home or at work, or when we're talking about our finances, sometimes we find that we're moving away from success. So how do we overcome this? How can we find the clarity and courage we need so that we can unlock our hidden power? Well, it's time to be unabashedly, unapologetically, happily untethered to the ego thinking that can sabotage our success. It's time to tap into our soul connection instead so we can broadcast our hidden power from the hilltops and advance our soul's agenda. This episode is for you if you wonder how to regain your stability after a trauma, how to redefine who you are and what you want, and how to self-correct your patterns so that you don't experience yet another trauma. Yes, these episodes are about how to find your hidden power when you want to transform challenges into successes. I like to call it the audacity of alchemy. Because when we're feeling stuck, it's never the situation that has us stuck. It's our energy that's become stuck in doubts, worries, frustrations, indecision. And often this is because of a spiritual injury that we've experienced, some kind of hidden trauma that's interrupting our soul's work. So it isn't the pain of our situation. It's the pain of not being connected in the natural energy of who we really are, of being connected to that magical part of us that's a creative vibrational being who can use positive energies to create what we want and bring it into physical manifestation. Part of this process is to allow our manifestations to materialize and not get stuck in the negative vibrations that block them. These positive energies that we talk about so much are where we find the magic of alchemy. And using our hidden power means using these positive energies to effect transformation. Because if you're like me, then you're someone who has the audacity, the willingness to take bold risks and transform challenges into success. So let's talk about this idea of transformation and the audacity of alchemy. Because your choice of frequency can change the course of your journey. You know, after life-changing events that create trauma and spiritual injury inside of us, we can feel disconnected with everything, everyone, and even ourselves. We might swing from being highly vigilant as if all the warning bells are going off to a complete and utter tailspin. And then we might hear certain songs or a particular line from a TV show that triggers us. 
Our spiritual life can suffer where we question why we're here or how our angels could allow us to suffer so much. We might feel detached, annoyed, anxious, and highly irritable in so many ways. These negative emotions get a hold of us and we feel like we're splintering from our very soul. Well, we know that trauma rewires the brain as it tries to protect us. Now, I'm not going to get into the differences between the physical side and the emotional side of what's happening with the brain. For this episode, like so many other episodes, we're really concerned with ego thinking and how the negative emotional responses can actually create a lot of harm and hold us back from being a conscious creator, from creating success in our lives. The good news is, just like trauma rewires the brain, we can also very easily rewire our own brain right back to a good place where we can once again be centered and confident and feel whole again. Even though these spiritual injuries hijack our sense of stability and even our purpose sometimes, we do have neuroplasticity, which means our brain can recover and be brought back. We can use our spiritual injury to refine who we are and what we want simply by reframing, by looking at what we don't want and out of that identify what we do want, we can begin to process what we've been through, reconnect with our core self, and consciously transform darkness into light. We can change the course of our life with many different therapeutic tools, but my very favorite by far is knowing that our choice of frequency changes the course of our journey. Our choice of frequency changes the course of our journey. So that's step one. First and foremost is focusing on the positive emotions that transform negative feelings into positive ones. Darkness into light, pain into comfort. It's a choice and a very simple choice indeed. With this practice and discipline, and sometimes it does take practice and discipline, the thoughts and reactions and responses responses, excuse me, that have been harmful can be changed into thoughts and reactions and responses that rewire our brain. Let me say that again. The thoughts and reactions and responses that have been harmful can be changed into thoughts and reactions and responses that rewire our brain. So here's one of my favorite mantras. I'll put it up here on the screen for you. With harmony, I love directing positive energies toward a joyful outcome. With harmony, I love directing positive energies toward a joyful outcome. Because this isn't a matter of fixing the problem, it's simply a matter of changing the energy. It's not a matter of fixing the problem, it's a matter of changing or shifting the energy. So this is a mantra that works for me. Now your journey is sacred to you. Your story is unique, your experiences are unique, and your outcome will be unique. You and only you know how you feel, and more importantly, how you want to feel. I know that for me, I don't like feeling bad. I don't need to swim in negativity. I like to feel better as soon as possible, and that's why I create and use these mantras that we talk about so often. Now, your spiritual injury may have infiltrated every part of your life, as it tends to do, but you can change the effect it's had on you. That time was not lost or wasted. It can be processed with a new perspective. The easiest way to do that? Look for the positives within the experience. If you can't find anything positive, which is common, then look for the blessings. Look for the blessings. You can get past the past. You don't have to be re-stimulated or relive your trauma or be buried in it or be constantly triggered by it. Simply change your thought patterns about it, and that alone will begin to rewire your brain. Find 10 positives or 10 blessings about your situation every day. And if you come up empty, then find 10 life-affirming mantras. And as you repeat these over and over, the positives, the blessings, or even just life-affirming mantras, as you repeat these over and over, that is rewiring your thoughts and your energies. You know, I haven't talked about this in a while, but when I experienced PTSD, one of the tools I used to get past the debilitating emotions was a vision journal. Every single day, I'd create my own mantra and then find an image that was cohesive to that thought. Every single day, every morning, that's how I started my day, and I'd do a new page in my vision journal. I literally created my way out of the effects of PTSD by changing my thoughts visually. And here on the screen, I'm going to show you an example of what someone did at one of our workshops. So this is a popular technique. A lot of people just love it. 
There are lots of tools to heal from PTSD and spiritual injury. I'll put a few of them up here for you. Some physical, like supplements, breathing, exercise, rhythmic drum circles, and there are some tools within cognitive therapy, more on the emotional side, which is all about changing the negative thought patterns about the self and the world in order to alter unwanted behavioral patterns. In other words, we change our thoughts and we change our behaviors, like crying obsessively, for instance, which is common with PTSD. So one is to find a thought that you can't argue with, something that's a positive belief. Another is to take on a spiritually centered perspective by asking, how would God view this situation? Or how would my angels or my guides view the situation? And what would they say about this from a higher perspective? Which really helps in finding some gratitude. And when you're finding gratitude, you're, yep, you're rewiring the brain. Another tool is to focus on values and virtues. And remember, a value can sometimes just be lip service, but it becomes a virtue when we put it into action. But of all the tools for overcoming trauma, my favorite is still the vision journal. So let's get back to this idea of rewiring the brain and how to become whole again after a spiritual injury so that you can find the success you crave, however you identify with success. Now before we do that, if you're someone who likes to create with purpose, if you're someone who likes to be a conscious creator, then I just want to take a minute for this little reminder if you already know that you're ready to dissolve life's obstacles that are on your path to success, if you already know that you're ready to do your soul's work and be a creator, then you might be ready for this amazing new tool to get you moving into some better patterns and frequencies where success can find its way to you. It's called the Alchemy Matrix, and it's going to help you, as they say, create your destiny, literally design your future. Because it's an interactive roadmap designed to help you solve problems, dissolve barriers, heal spiritual injuries, and bring in a lot of clarity so you can create a future that you'd like to see. Just a brief reminder that you can sign up to learn more about the Alchemy Matrix at, success, at successcircleworkshops.com. And I'll promise to tell you more about that here in just a minute. So we're talking about rewiring the brain and how to become whole again after a spiritual injury. You know, when we experience trauma, it's not unusual, unusual to lose our identity, our sense of well-being. Our moral compass can sometimes become corrupted, and we don't even know which way is up or which direction we're supposed to go in. And we begin, begin to ask ourselves, who am I now? And that's how much spiritual injury can change us at our core. We begin to ask ourselves, who am I now? Because somehow we've developed this false identity in order to survive. We could also call this false identity our ego self because ego wants to protect us. So it says things to us like, I'm bad, I'm not deserving of happiness and joy, I'm such a screw up, I failed so miserably and I'm so embarrassed at who I've become. And this acts like a magnet to attract similar circumstances and similar people that are in alignment with our lack of self-worth. And then a pattern emerges. If we don't self-correct, we might even encounter another trauma because we didn't change our patterns. And I see this happen a lot. So this patterning might go on and on, and we find it difficult to understand why the same thing keeps happening to us, why we meet the same kinds of people, why things feel pretty much the same every time, over and over again. And as time goes on and these circumstances become more and more challenging, at some point we begin to see that we don't want to keep repeating these patterns over and over. We realize that something must change and we start looking for the how. So fortunately, after becoming aware of these patterns, dissolving them will not be as difficult as we might think. So how do we do this so that we can find the success we're craving? Well, I have an exercise for you. One we watch for our strongest and most recurring emotions. Now for me, and you've all heard me talk about this before, frustration was always my strongest, most chronic emotion. For you, it might be something different. It might be panic or a sense of loss or losing. Maybe it's anger or grief or indecision. But that's step one is to watch for that strongest emotion that seems to always want to surface. And then here's step two, we can transmute that emotion. And this is where I just love creating life-affirming mantras. As an example, we know that my chronic emotion used to be frustration, so the way to transform that might be, 
with harmony, I'm shifting my frustration into light. Or with harmony, I'm transforming my frustration into light. Or with harmony, I'm changing all feelings of frustration into light. You can literally pick and choose your adjectives, shifting, transforming, changing for whatever works for you. And then you can carry that one step farther, and once you get something that sounds and feels right for you, convert this mantra into a page in your vision journal. Or if you don't use a journal, simply do a single vision postcard. Choose one mantra that resonates with you, add an image to it, and then you have something to tape to your computer screen or carry in your car so that you can repeat it over and over. And as you repeat this mantra over and over, again, remember, you're rewiring your brain. And then step three, and this is one of my favorites, is to radiate love energies to everyone and everything around you. The practice of being in your heart, genuinely radiating love, will transform you into a divine magnet, drawing more loving experiences to you. Through this practice, we will start to feel that we are whole again. We'll feel gentler, kinder, excuse me, kinder, um, and life just begins to get a whole lot easier. We'll be more open, much less reactive, and then we can begin to get back on track to success for whatever success means for you. So that's your exercise for today as we create a flow of positive possibilities to fulfill your soul's work and the resolution that your soul is seeking, and we create that flow for your success. Yes, so this is your invitation to step it up a notch and do something maybe unimaginable, something unreasonable, something that maybe seems totally impossible. Just remember that to the universe, nothing is impossible. All that's required from you is a shift in frequency because your choice of frequency can change the course of your journey. It's part of becoming whole again. Well, I hope this helps you as you're using the process and the powers of alchemy to transform challenges and obstacles into positive new successes. But if you still can't get your head around what's got you stuck, you can tell me about it. You can leave a question here. Or if you're someone who has the audacity, the willingness to take bold risks to transform challenges into success, you can find out more about our events at successcircleworkshops.com. This is where you can learn more about the audacity of alchemy and how to unlock your hidden power. You'll get a personalized interactive roadmap that's custom designed to get you unstuck by unlocking your hidden power to create big magical changes, you know, alchemy. You'll learn to solve problems, dissolve barriers, and bring success to you. So don't wait. Go to successcircleworkshops.com and get your personalized alchemy matrix package right now. And here's what you'll get. A full color workbook, filled with hands-on exercises to inspire your creative energies, membership in your very own success circle for high-level masterminding and networking, your very own customized alchemy matrix to unlock your hidden power and bring success to you, and your very own personal unstuckologist. Remember, the alchemy matrix is the only tool of its kind, and it's only available here. So if you're ready to approach your life's challenges with audacity, if you're ready to finally banish frustration, indecision, and the negative spiral, if you're ready to watch success materialize right before your eyes, then go to successcircleworkshops.com and get your personalized Alchemy Matrix package now and watch the magic start to happen. Thanks for joining me today, and I'm wishing you a life filled with all the alchemy you need to bring success to you. Feel free to share this video with anyone you know who's feeling stuck, and I look forward to seeing you in one of our upcoming success circles. You can find out more at successcircleworkshops.com.